Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Minifigure Spotlight. Last time we talked about the ninja mech pilot suits of Dragons Rising Season 2. But today, we will be talking about the villainous force of Season 2, Lord Raz and the Wolf Warriors. This is a really wonderful and well-designed line of figures, so I thought I'd take a video to talk about it. Due to a lot of the designs being so in line with each other, I'm splitting this video up into three different segments. We're going to have a section discussing the Wolf Warriors, the two generals, and then we're going to end it out talking about Lord Raz himself. We've got quite a lot to talk about today, so let's stop wasting time and get right into looking at these minifigures. The design of the soldiers of this army are absolutely spectacular. Wolf Ninja Assassins is such a fun idea for a villainous army in Ninjago. A lot of traditional depictions of ninja make them out to be a lot more deadly than the ninja of Ninjago. And whilst the ninja of Ninjago absolutely still nail the look of ninjas, they have more of a kind of superhero friendly look to them. These guys in comparison look absolutely deadly. No questions asked if these guys come after you, you are in deep crap. And I think this kind of look contrasts against the more superhero-ified regular ninja really well. The wolf warriors look deadly. Unless they happen across a giant cat. Thank you. Thank you for that. Their intimidation factor is definitely diminished when they come across giant adorable animals. But outside of that rare circumstance, these guys have a great intimidating design. These guys juggle a lot of different colors. But I think the design really makes them work. A notable part of this design I really like is the little light blue daggers on the front of them. I also really love the recolor of the legacy skulking armor. Beyond it just being nice to have this piece in dark blue, it looks really good on these soldiers. The face printing beneath the masks is also incredibly cool, revealing that these guys are just regular people. Interestingly though, there is an alternate face revealing that they do have a powered up look, which looks really cool, which is most prominently seen on this hooded guy who is a total mystery to me. He appears in considerably less sets than the regular masked wolf warriors, which leads me to wonder about two things. One, is this guy actually important in some way? Maybe he's either a higher ranking soldier than the average masked warriors, or maybe he's actually an important character. Or the more likely thing, the guy's probably just not canon. We've seen this kind of thing happen before with Ninjago armies. The average low ranking wolf warrior soldiers look incredibly cool. And what's even cooler to me are the generals. And since they both use the exact same torso, legs, and scarf design, I'm just going to talk about them both at once. These designs do a really good job at conveying the fact that these guys are important, but not in the way that, say, Season 1 Raz was with his gold imperial design. No, no, no. With these Season 2 villains, the way that Lego conveys their importance in Lord Raz's army is by giving them this kind of big game hunter look. What with the giant scarf, the really nice looking tunic, and the heavy looking armor, these guys' armor look bulky and built for taking a lot of damage. And I know I just mentioned it, but that scarf looks so good. It really completes the look for these minifigures and reminds me of someone like Craven the Hunter. Which is good because I feel like that's the kind of vibe Lego was going for when designing these guys. Also, in order to convey the idea that one of the generals, Cinder, is completely in tune with the elements of smoke, they gave his head a translucent grey design. That is so cool, I would love to see more stuff like this. The yellow of Cinder's face is unfortunately a bit faded, which, like colors being printed onto dark Lego pieces being faded, it's just a problem Lego has had for years now. And I really hope someday they get around to fixing it. But despite that issue, I still find this face design to be dope as hell. These general designs are absolutely awesome and convey a sense of rank and power within an army of savage wolf hunters so well. I love these two minifigures. The final minifigure we have here is the big bad of this whole army, Lord Raz himself. Now, as time has went on, I've seen people have a lot of conflicting feelings on this minifigure, so I want to make my opinion on it absolutely clear. This minifigure is absolutely stunning, and I think better than the Season 1 Raz minifigure in almost every way. The central complaint I've seen people have about this minifigure is arm printing. On the Season 1 Lord Raz minifigure, he has arm printing representing the same light pink stripes that he has on his head. The Season 2 minifigure, however, is missing details like this. Preliminary art and versions of the figure show that it was originally planned to have this printing like the Season 1 version, but at some point during the development process, likely as a cost-cutting measure, it was cut from the final design. And I don't think this is enough for a problem to ruin the minifigure for me. This Season 1 Raz design was sleeveless, and as a result, we see his arm details. This Season 2 design has sleeves, so as a result, we don't see those details. Personally, I think I kind of prefer the design with sleeves over the sleeveless version, but I wouldn't be opposed to the return of the sleeveless design on future Raz minifigures. Beyond the arm printing discourse, wow, 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 what a great design we have here. Something I really love about this minifigure is how distinct he feels from the rest of the army. The rest of the army have black, purple, dark blue, light blue, and a bunch of other color details, 
but Lord Raz only has some of those, being the black and the purple, and the light blue, which still keeps him in line with the rest of his army, but also makes him feel distinct from it. Which I think is a great move on the part of the designers over at LEGO because Lord Raz is meant to be the leader of this army, and completely distinct from them, being a tiger leading an entire army of humans. His hammer design is really dope as well. As opposed to his season 1 hammer design, the season 2 one has a blade on the end of it, conveying a sense of danger that the season 1 hammer just didn't. Which is a really good way to show Raz's mission statement that he's not messing around this time. Sadly, Lord Raz's head still has the problem of his teeth not being coloured white, causing them to kind of just awkwardly blend in with the rest of his face. Unfortunately, I doubt this problem is ever going to get fixed, but as long as it's here, I'm going to keep mentioning it, because it really bugs me. Still, this is an absolutely incredible minifigure that does a really good job at conveying the danger and viciousness Lord Raz and his army have to offer. Overall, I absolutely love the designs of this villain faction. The LEGO designers did a really good job at painting these guys out to be intimidating as hell. They have some great original molds like the wolf mask piece, and they use colours really well to make a very uniform looking army. And when that colour scheme is broken from, it's done with actual artistic reason. I love these designs so much man, what a great villain faction for season 2.